Christoph, the new theory that you and others are proposing in terms of integrated information being a key to consciousness, how can that be used to determine what things are conscious, uh, whether it's animals or plants or even non-biological systems? Okay, this theory, so it talks about integrated information. This is a theory of, um, of Giulio uh, Tononi. And, and it says that any system that has integrated information, which is sort of information viewed from within, from within the system, has consciousness. So we know that humans have it sometimes, not when they're in a deep sleep, not when they are under anesthesia. So you want to explain that fact why, why the same brain, which is in a different state, sometimes have it and sometimes not. Also, we know that certain parts of the brain have it, are closely, intimately involved in consciousness, while other parts of the brain, for example, my cerebellum, which is this little brain at the back of my head, if I lose that, my, I, I, may, I, I get ataxia, I, I look like I'm drunk, my, my speech slurs, but I have no disturbances of consciousness. So that, and, and so we, we need to explain that, and integrated information explains that. This structure is not nearly as integrated as, as a different part of the brain, the cerebral cortex. It also says that other animals that have integrated information, for instance, that possess a cortex like we do, they're also conscious. But it also extends to other animals that don't have a cortex, like, a, for example, a squid or a bee that have a very complicated... Um, a very complicated, highly nonlinear feedback system. They all have integrated information, we presuppose, just based on the complexity of the nervous system. It says also non-intuitively that certain system, that an artificial system may also have it depending on the way it's actually wired. It depends on the mechanism. It depends on the way it's built. So you can build systems that have lots of integrated information. They would be conscious. It would, which, which says it would feel like something to be conscious. Mm -hmm. right? That's what it ultimately feels to be conscious. It feels like something to be the system. While you could build a different system that has the same input-output behavior, but that by itself is not conscious because its wiring doesn't give rise to integrated information. So for instance, today we know that the systems that perform much better than, than people and certainly much better than brain damaged uh, patients, for example, Watson, the IBM computer that, mm. that successfully beat humans in jeopardy, right? Or Deep Blue, another IBM program that 15 years ago beat uh, the, the, the grand chess master, right? So if a human were to do that, if a human were to play jeopardy, we'd say, of course, he or she is conscious. With this computer, it's more difficult to say. It depends on the, on the wiring. You have to actually look at inside the box, as it were, look at the software and the wiring to actually determine whether or not this system is conscious. Because the system can claim it's conscious. It can have input out of behavior, but not, not be conscious. Yes, if it's organized in a certain way, for instance, as, a, as what, 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 what we call in the lingo feed-forward system, it may perform very complex action, like recognizing a cat, uh, driving a car like, like Google Cars does, but may not be conscious. And it can even claim to be conscious. Of course I'm conscious and not be conscious. It, that's correct. It could even claim to be conscious. <laughs> and so, for instance, we're faced with an interesting question. What about the Internet? Right? So the Internet is mankind's most complex artifact, yeah. the most complex thing we've ever built. Yeah. It contains only out of 10 billion computers, roughly. Each one has a couple of billion transistors. So as a whole, there are maybe 10 to the, you know, 17, 10 to the 18 transistors. That's 10,000 times more synapses than in my brain or in your brain. So it's an interesting question, which right now isn't really a good answer. Does it feel like something to be the internet? Is the internet or part of it conscious? Or could it be conscious in the future? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But I think it's a question that in principle mm. can be answered with a theory such as integrated information theory. How about the interior of a neutron star, which certainly has an enormous number of components very tightly packed? Uh, I don't know. It, that really, it's a good question. It really depends on the physics of the star. So if you have an aggregate, if you have a grain of, so, a grain of sand that has itself no states and no structure, that wouldn't be conscious. So even if you have a heap of them, if you right. put, and they, you know, you just have this dune, the, you yeah. know, a gigantic dune, by itself that wouldn't be conscious. You cannot just senselessly heap one non-conscious part onto another non-conscious particle or mechanism and then expect them to be conscious. Right. It really depends on the detail of the interaction. So in the neutron star, you, would, we, you have to carefully investigate to what extent does the physics give rise to integrated information. So I, cannot, I, I can't give you an, an exact answer at this point. But it is not impossible, it's not a joke uh, to, to, to ask the question, does it feel like something to be a it is a star? Let's put it that way. It is, a, has, it is a question that will have in print, that has in principle an exact answer that says either yes it is or no it's not. If the answer is yes, that means it feels, it would feel like something, however dimly it may feel, to be conscious. 
to 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 take an analogy, let's let's think about temperature. Uh, uh, let's think of heat. Right? We experience heat. We sit here in the tropic and it's hot. Now, if you go to minus 270 degrees Celsius, that's just one degree Celsius above absolute cold, right? the coldest it can get right. before molecular motion stops. That, in principle, for us, it's utterly unimaginable cold. Everything would, would immediately die. Right? Yeah. But in principle, there is still heat there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it may be with consciousness in these very simple, organ uh, in these very simple systems, like a, maybe a neutron star, that it feels like something very, very, very minimal, but it's still above zero. It may feel like something to be a neutron star. It may. 